And then council, check your mics, please. One minute, council, check your mics, please. Testing. Good evening. Testing. Oh, there it is. Got it. Please. There you go. Wait a minute. I got me. Figure this thing out together. We're going to figure this thing out together. That's right. <laughs> we have to. We ain't no other choice, is it? Are you on it, too? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, slingshot. Call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner. Here. Reverend Campbell. Here. Mr. Hood. Here. Mayor Jones. Here. Mr. Mayo. Here. Vice Mayor Miller. Here. Mr. Saunders. Here. Mr. Vogler. Here. Mr. Whittle. Here. We're going to ask everyone to stand. We'll have an invocation by Councilman Sherman Saunders, followed by a Pledge of Allegiance. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. God, tonight we come again to say thank you. We ask for your continuous blessings. In the words of our Vice Mayor, Dr. Gary Miller, you know, this was two weeks ago, we believe it is imperative that our children grow up in a world full of love, kindness, understanding, and no differences are settled through any form of violence. Yes, God, we know that children are watching. We want them to see you through us. Our mayor, Alonzo Jones, and all city council members, city staff, and citizens with like minds pray for unity and encourage others to join our circle of love and respect. We ask that our city, Danville, Virginia, become a beacon of light for the world to emulate. As we need peace, understanding, and respect among all of your children everywhere, please, please spread your love through all of your universe. We ask all these blessings in your name and for your sake. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to say good evening to those of you who are here in the chamber, those who are watching River City TV or those who are at home. Good evening on this first day of summer. I'm going to ask Jack Garrett, would he please come forward and feel free to bring your family and any guests that you have with you. We have a special presentation. Please don't be shy. Those who want to come with him, please come with him. I promise I'll behave myself tonight. <laughs> I promise. I want to say good evening to you all. This is a certificate of recognition. I can't read this, Councilman Saunders, like Jack and Alex Vardavas, but I'm going to try. <laughs> Whereas Jack Garrett has spent his entire adult life covering and delivering the news to the citizens of Danville and surrounding areas for 43 years with WBTM, WAKG, WSET, and WDVA, and whereas Jack Garrett has informed and helped guide the public through weather-related events 
including Tropical Storm Michael, Hurricane Fran, winter storms and floods. And whereas Jack Garrett has engaged with political figures like these around this chaos during his tenure reported on the effect their decisions have had on the general public. And whereas Jack Garrett has been recognized by his peers throughout Virginia and West Virginia, winning countless awards through the VAB and the VAPB, including the prestigious Robert Gallimore Distinguished Service Award, and whereas Jack Garrett has set the gold standard for news reporting and has practiced the highest ethical, moral, and fairness standards. And therefore, I, Alonzo Jones, along with members of Danville City Council of the City of Danville, Virginia, do hereby recognize Jack Garrett and sincerely express our appreciation for his dedication and distinguished service to the community over the past 43 years, given under my hand this 21st day of June. Let's give it a little bit <laughs> Please feel free to get some comments. You're going to introduce those beautiful people that are standing with you. My wife, Charlotte, my son, Jack, my daughters, Carol Ann and Sarah Elizabeth Garrett. You all know Alex Vardavis and Sherry Duarte from WBTM and WAKG, respectively. Thank you so much. God bless. Signing off for the final time from the WBTM and WAKG <laughs> newsroom, I'm Jack Garrett. Let's give him a big <laughs> You know what Alex, Alex Vardavis was saying, I can't, I'll be glad when it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a smear. <laughs> yes, sir. Cancel. I um, wish Jack the best of life as you go forward and enjoy yourself. I could say that I miss you calling me at 6.30 in the morning for a story, <laughs> but that would not be true. John Crane. Thanks for calling me after 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anyone else? <laughs> Councilman Buckner. Yeah, Jack, congratulations on your retirement. Geez, I don't know what radio is going to sound like in Danville anymore. Uh, first, Linwood's gone. Then Chuck Vifferman's gone. Now you, Alex, don't be getting any ideas, man. <laughs> we don't know what will happen to Danville Radio if you guys are gone. Jack, thank you so much for your years of service. I don't know what my mornings are going to sound like anymore. <laughs> Councilman Campbell. Yes, uh, thank you so much for your many, many years of service in our community. A lot of people don't fully understand how important radio is because it's always on. Snow, sleet, just whatever. There are individuals who press their way through the storm and report the good news about Danville, Virginia. I, I salute you and your family, and you may enjoy your retirement, but it, it's not over. And uh, the man behind you, you pray for him, because he needs help. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Mayo. Councilman Mayo. Councilman Vogler. Uh, Jack, uh, congratulations to you, and, and I know you're looking forward to some, some much-deserved uh, free time and probably won't know what to do with yourself for a while. You, you know, just all this extra time you're going to have on your hands, but I know you're looking forward to that time with your family, and, and um, just thank you for so many great years on the radio and, and so many pivotal moments in, in, the, hitty, uh, in the history of our uh, city that, that you were there for and you were the voice of. And, uh, we're certainly going to miss you, but but I'm happy for you and that you get to to enjoy this this time in your life. Thank you, Councilman Hood. Uh, yes, thank you. Congratulations again. Um, uh, we just want to thank you for your services through radio and just welcome you for having a voice in our homes throughout. Just congratulations and and, and enjoy your ride. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I talked to him beforehand. He said he was enjoying his retirement. He'd lost 20 pounds. That's amazing. What, <laughs> Wait, uh, what has your wife got? To, what has that honeydew list got on? <laughs> Thank you for all you've done. <laughs> Councilman Whittle.
Uh, Jack, the most amazing thing about all of this is 43 years. I don't think I was born yet. <laughs> <laughs> Felt good to say it anyway. But, but the best part about it, Jack, is when you have your family to be able to hear all the accolades and all the things that you've done for the community, to hear your council members and the city staff, thank you for your years of service. Thank you so much for all that you've done early in the mornings. I've actually read a lot about you that was printed, and everything that I read from the staff at WBTM, except for Alex, everyone talked about how nice you are and how nice you were. No, I'm just kidding with Alex, but thank you so much for your years of service. This is the kind of stuff, if you heard Councilman Saunders' prayer of unity, this is the stuff we love to do. So again, congratulations to not only you, but to your entire family. Let's give him another hand, please. And since you retired, you don't have to stay here tonight unless you want to. <laughs> Communications from visitors is an opportunity for citizens to address council on matters not on the agenda. Citizens who desire to speak on matters not listed on the agenda or on matters which do not have a public hearing will be heard at this time. Citizens who desire to speak on agenda items that have a public hearing will be heard when the agenda item is considered and public hearing is open. We're under communications. Anyone desires to speak on an item on the agenda, please come forward and state your name and your address. Good evening to you, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of City Council, my name is Gus Steyer and I live at 165 Canterbury Road and I am currently the chairman of the City's Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm going to stick to script. Uh, two weeks ago, I appeared before City Council to argue against a change in our zoning ordinance proposed by the planning director. In fact, the last two times that I appeared before City Council was to argue against changes to our zoning ordinance proposed by the planning director. Now I understand that our planning director is leaving and I'm quite upset about that. We find it quite easy to criticize, but often quite difficult to compliment. I've been here twice to find fault with something Mr. Plashinsky had put forward, then I should have been here 100 or 200 times to offer praise for the job that he was doing, because 99% of the time, I thought he was doing a great job. I don't know why Doug is leaving, and frankly, it's none of my business. But I do know that if he is being allowed to leave without every possible effort being made to keep him, then that is a mistake. We're all excited about the potential for real growth in our community. Whether that growth is sustained or just a blip on the radar greatly depends on decisions made by a planning department. In seeking out a new planning director, I hope that the city will be able to find someone with not only Mr. Plashinsky's knowledge and experience, but someone with his temperament and attitude. In closing, let me just say that it has been a pleasure to work with Doug. I know that he, his job can sometimes be a thankless job, but not tonight, because I would like to sincerely thank him for all the work that he has done for the city and particularly the Board of Zoning Appeals. He has been an all, his has been an all too brief tenure, and I, along with many others who have worked with him, are extremely sorry to see him go. We wish him well in his future endeavors. Thank you for your time. Well, we're going to applaud Doug in his absence, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for that. Communications, we're still on the communication. Anyone to expire or want to speak on any item that's not on the agenda or on the agenda may come forward at this time. Under the consent agenda, Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. May I like to make a motion that we approve consent agenda items A through D. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Campbell. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the discussion of the motion. Councilman Whittle. Just ask questions to go through. Sure. You said you got a question? Yeah, I just Speak had, into your microphone so I can hear you. Sure, I had, I had a, a couple questions on some different items. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> What's your question? You ready? Digging right so I get to the point. Right? Okay. It'll be an old business, so I'm done, Mayor. Thank you. We're still in the consent agenda. Discussion of the motion. Anyone else? If not, Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. 
Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Consideration of the budget of the City of Danville, the Capital and Special Projects Plan, and the Budget Appropriation Ordinance Council. What's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. May I like to make a motion that we approve a resolution uh, approving the budget for various funds of the City of Danville for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023, final adoption. Second by Councilman Vogler. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Back to you, Councilman Buckner. <clears throat> uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a resolution approving the fiscal year 2023 capital and special projects plan for the city of Danville, Virginia. Final adoption. Second by Dr. Miller. Discussion of the motion. Yep. Councilman Saunders. Mr. Mayor, uh, this is with regard to the total budget for the city, I believe. I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Item number three. Yep. I can hear you. Excuse me? I couldn't hear what you No, In other words, Councilman Saunders got a question on number three. We're still in the discussion on item number two. Discussion on item number two. Anyone else? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Back to you, Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve an ordinance amending and reordaining section 37-36 of the City of Danville, Virginia Code to, I'm sorry? Number three, number three. Oh, I'm so sorry, I went, went one too far. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a budget appropriation ordinance for fiscal year 2023, final adoption. Second by Dr. Miller, Councilman Saunders, discussion of the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of uh, Danville City Council, Citizen of Danville, regarding the motion on the floor to approve the city manager's funding recommendation for fiscal year 2023, which includes the budget for Danville Public Schools, I find myself with a need to explain my vote. I am a lifelong supporter of education and of those who seek continuous learning. As a member of this council for 24 years, I have consistently voted for all funding for Danville Public Schools. This also includes working for and asking the general public to approve this most recent 1% school tax. While I am extremely hopeful for the success of Danville Public Schools and the success of our new school superintendent, I cannot forget the numerous years I was totally disrespected and ignored by not getting answers and explanations to the numerous questions I have been asking the school system for many, many years. To include most recently from a current elected member of the Danville Public School Board, the mayor and city manager and I, along with the vice mayor, we met with Danville School Board representatives to determine how the city council and school board can work more closely together for the good of our students and all Danville public schools. This request was made because Danville City Council has unanimously agreed to make education the number one priority for the city of Danville. I told the school board representative just that. Number one priority is education. This meeting was called for February 2nd, 2022. It was a terrible experience, at least for me, especially when at the very beginning of the meeting, one of the school board members, and I'm quoting, literally got up 
put on his jacket, opened the closed door, and proceeded to leave. I did ask him to please close the door behind him. He only returned when the school board chairperson asked him to do so. His response was upon returning, and I quote, if I come back and I am talking and someone asks me a question, I will talk over top of them, end quote. I have been trying for several years to get information and answers to questions for the sole purpose of trying to be more helpful to our students, teachers, and our school system. I believe all of my effort have been none successful. I continue to hear so many complaints from teachers, parents, students, and other community citizens. I am reminded that the school board cannot write itself a check for 20 plus million dollars every year to address school board business. Only Danville City Council can do that. You don't give somebody 20 plus million dollars to walk out of your meeting. And we have been doing just that each year, giving the school system millions of dollars for several years. While I am not proud of this decision, yet it is one I must make. Feeling ignored, disrespected, dealing with such arrogance, and receiving many concerns about our school system, my vote is no. Thank you, sir. Still in discussion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? No. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Mr. Buckner? Yes. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Let me ask our budget team, everybody in front of our budget team to please stand. From our budget team back there, please. All city employees stand. Let's give them a big hand for the great job that they've done. Great. I also want to take this opportunity to say to Councilman Saunders, to Dr. Miller, the mayor actually gets an opportunity to appoint persons to the Education Committee, to Councilman Saunders, to Dr. Gary Miller. Thank you so much for when I made the call, you both said yes. I do know, and I won't go into it, my heart is still heavy. So on tonight, I have the opportunity to appoint two new members to the Education Committee, and I'm so happy to report after thanking Dr. Miller and Council, will you join me in applauding Councilman Saunders and Dr. Miller? <laughs> after much conversation with Councilman Whittle and much conversation with Councilman Campbell, I thank you both for filling in and replacing, this is the end of the school year, our new Education Committee members will be Councilman Whittle and Councilman Campbell. Let's give them a big hand as they will serve. The new business review of general fund financials. Michael, good evening to you and nope. I believe we missed one. Which one B? Councilman Buckner, now back to you on B. <laughs> May I like to make a motion that we approve an ordinance amending and reordaining section seventy three, I'm sorry, thirty seven and thirty six of the Danville City Code to increase personal property tax on airplanes from thirty cent per one hundred dollars of assessed value to $0.69 cent per $100 of assessed value effective January 1st, 2023, final adoption. Second by Councilman Mayo, discussion of the motion. Councilman Vogler. <clears throat> yeah, this, um, this came forward a, a few years ago uh, when uh, Fred Jenks was on council. He proposed this, this tax increase, and at the time, uh, I don't think it even got seconded for a vote, but it's, it's back again tonight. and. Uh, I was opposed to it a few years ago, and I'm, I'm still opposed to it now. And if y'all just give me a couple minutes, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, in the budget that we just passed, we increased hangar fees already in that budget. 
So already the cost of those with airplanes is already going up out at our airport. This is a 130% tax increase that nets the city a whopping $28,450 in annual revenue for a budget that's $285 million. I'll say that again. It's a 130% tax increase and it gets the city $28,000 a year. Our budget is $285 million a year. That's a 130% tax increase on property owners that equals 0.01% of our budget. So we aren't balancing the budget with this tax increase. In my opinion, this is a solution in search of a problem. I'll be voting no. Anyone else on discuss? Dr. Miller. Well, just I'd like to hear from the Speak right into your microphone, the please. Transportation director, why we need this increase and uh, where it will go, where the monies will go. Good evening, Mark. Multiple reasons, uh, city council members, that the airport commission wanted to see this uh, fee increase, the personal property tax increase go into effect. Uh, first and foremost, our fees are considerably lower. This is just to bring us up to the low level of other airports. Um, for example, Martinsville is $1.55 per hundred. Uh, Person County, North Carolina is 72 cents per hundred. These are small rural airports where the personal property tax rates are higher than what we're asking for it to be. So I think we are undervaluing the airport and reflecting to potential customers and pilots a question, why are you charging so little? Is your facilities poor? Or are they under maintained? That's not the case. On top of that, our fees, our costs at the airport have significantly increased over the last 17 years for new hangar construction. Specifically, 17 years ago, we built hangar building. The cost per square foot was 29 cents. It's $29 per square foot. It's now $200, over six and a half times. We just construct, or we're in the process of rehabilitating a cross run runway. Three and a half million dollars, the city's money, to do this work. I believe, and the airport commission believe, that this is a fair and makes us still remain very, very competitive with other airports in our area. That's why. Anyone else? Madison? How many aircraft will that affect, Mark? Well, we have 42 aircraft based at the uh, airport currently. Uh, however, Averett University's aircraft, which I believe they have 12 in their fleet now, uh, they're exempt from uh, paying personal property tax because they are exempt through the state code. So the balance. And the, the ability to generate additional income or revenue for personal property tax is based on the aircraft that are at the field at the time. So it's really hard to project what the total amount will be. But so you're looking at uh, 30, 30 aircraft that would be affected. And Council some Buckner. people own more than one aircraft. Thank you, Mark. Councilman Buck. Mark, what are we expecting, or what is the, the airport doing um, in preparation for the next few years um, with the growth we're seeing in Danville, the continued growth we're seeing in our region? What are we doing to prepare ourselves for that? And, and how will this $28,000 a year help that? Well, um, the, the commission, first of all, was looking at the combination of an increase in personal property tax and hangar rental fees to generate over $50,000. So um, this is going towards um, maintenance expenses. You know, our, our facilities are very old, so we, we renovate them. Currently, we're renovating the terminal re um, building. It's in to support what uh, we're expecting as far as traffic in the next three years. Uh, that's a million dollar project. The city's cost is around 20% of that. Uh, we're rehabilitating the uh, crosswind runway so we can potentially use it for parking aircraft related to the casino. Um, we're also, we just opened bids to rehabilitate our south ramp. The local match requirement for that is 2%, but it's a $5 million project. So 
the more money, I, I think the airport is, is striving to, to be more self-sustaining, and that's, that's the mission, and we just feel like our prices currently are undervalue the airport. Thank you, Mark. Anyone else? I just want to say thank you so much because here we, we've had this on and I haven't seen one person from the airport, no one opposed this whatsoever. No one is here tonight to oppose it. And so if it was a, you all know what you do better than we do, and there's not one person here that disagreed with this increase. So thank you so much. Councilman Vogel. Yeah, I, I guess it'll end up passing, but I'll just say again, five minutes ago, we just voted to increase the hangar fee. So we've already approved an increase that will bring in more money. And it's a 130% tax increase. If we came forward with a 130% tax increase on any of the other taxes, you'd fall out of your chair. So, um, and it's gonna bring us $28,000 a year to hit somebody with a 130% tax increase. Um, and, and the last time this did come up, we did hear from several of them, and this is the same exact tax increase. I don't know if it just slipped through the cracks this time or whatever. I did hear from person. I don't know what, you know, maybe they don't feel the need to come because last time it didn't even get seconded for a vote because it was such a big increase. So maybe they, did, they thought they didn't have to, but uh, I'll be voting no. Thank Council you. Councilman Camp. Well, uh, Mark, I have served with you several years in reference to airport and transit. And piggybacking after uh, Lee, do you feel that we will lose business by these increases? They can't go anywhere else that's less expensive. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you're going to move because I'm going to go find some place that's less costly, they can't do it. Pilots can't leave and find it because we're not increasing our fees in excess of the low fees that our other airports are charging that are nearby us. So yeah, it's a percentage-wise, it's a significant increase percentage-wise. However, it's still lower than what other everybody else is charging. I remember some of the complaints previously dealing with this concern. Could you just address that? I mean, I mean I'm trying to understand what you're saying, and we know that Dav is on the move, and uh, great things are coming our way. Um, the cost for them, yes, it costs more to operate, so you still feel that it's justified, not just because we are less in price, but we want to have an increase of business in our area. Yeah, the, the airport, I think, when people, like recently this past week, there were 39 jets that came into the airport for the Virginia International Race, and everybody, I think, that comes in, when you talk to the FBO and he interacts with the pilots, they all say that the facility looks really nice. I don't think that pilots expect a community airport with a population of a little over 40,000 to have the facilities that we have. But they're expensive to maintain. And I think this is user-based. You know, the folks that are benefiting from the airport are the people that are, would be paying these fees. You know, so when you, do, when you do recover the roof at a hangar building, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. So as a taxpayer, I think this is appropriate. I'm gonna go to Madison, I'm gonna go to Madison and then Lee, I'm calling for the vote. Madison, then Lee. So, so um, Avery's the FBO, so uh, how much, uh, is that working pretty well for us? It's working great. John Earl, the FBO manager, is wonderful. Fantastic, and so how much do they push back into the airport um, operations? Well, currently it's based on uh, lease fees and their fuel flow fee. So they're contributing uh, approximately forty, thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 annually based on what the facilities they rent and the fuel flow fees that come from their sales. How do, they make, it, how, how do, they, how do they make any money? How, how, how does Everett make money? Everett makes money off the sale of fuel, jet fuel. That's where FBOs make their money is off the sale of jet fuel because the profit margin for jet fuel is significantly greater than it is for piston engine aircraft fuel because of its being lead-based and how it's shipped. It's transported by pipe versus jet fuel versus uh, avgas, which is used for single-engine aircraft. So the, the cost is much less um, for um, selling jet fuel than it is for smaller aircraft. So 
Danville benefits, the airport and the FBO Avery University benefit greatly from the jet traffic that could access the field. That's where the revenue is, jet traffic. Lee, and then I'm calling for the vote. Madam Clerk, out the Lee, call for the vote. Lee? First of all, Mayor, thank you for allowing me one last uh, appeal. Um, again, we, we increased the hangar fees 10 minutes ago, so we've already added that cost onto the, the owners out there. My suggestion is let's give that a year. We can come back next year and hopefully maybe a smaller increase that's not 130% tax increase on top of increasing the fees. In my opinion, it's too much too soon. If we want to stagger this thing over time, I think that would maybe be more prudent. I'd be open to that. But I think we've already increased the fees to add a 130% tax increase on top of that is too much too soon. Thank you. Motion on the floor is to approve. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor Jones? Yes. Mr. Mayo? Yes. Vice Mayor Miller? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? No. Mr. Whittle? No. Mr. Buckner? No. Reverend Campbell? Yes. Mr. Hood? No. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. No. Michael, good evening to you. Mr. Attorney, that passed, correct? Mr. Attorney? Mr. Attorney, that passed? Yeah. Excuse me? Yes, sir. Okay. Ma six. Michael, uh, back to you, Michael. All right. Good evening, Council. Uh, in your agenda packets tonight, you have the May 31st uh, financial results for the general fund. Uh, but as we are uh, just two weeks away from the close of the fiscal year, I thought I would give you more current information. Since we've gotten through our tax collection period, uh, as you know, personal property and real estate taxes were due June 6th. So I can comment on those uh, at this time. Uh, regarding current real estate, uh, our budget was $18.5 million, and as of today, we have reached uh, that goal. We were at 100% collected and actually exceeded that by about 50000 as of today. Uh, with regard to personal property, uh, we've also met that budget of $13.2 million, exceeding that by about 6% today. Uh, also, delinquent personal property tax has been a very good performer this year. Uh, we budgeted just under a million and collected about $1.3 million in delinquent personal property taxes. Uh, with regard to local consumer taxes, uh, the main categories that we usually talk about, sales tax being the first, uh, we budgeted a little over $10 million this year, and we have collected almost 11. Uh, so that was a very good performer this year. Business licenses also performed well. Our budget was about $5.5 million, and we were close to 6 uh, for this year. Mills tax also, about 9.5 budgeted, and we're about at 9.75, so about 250000 more there. And then lodging also outperformed the budget. Uh, smaller volumes, but a large percentage. Uh, 1.8 million was budgeted, and we collected just under 2 million as of today. So we still have a couple of weeks left in this fiscal year. Uh, one other uh, item that has outperformed budgeted expectations is our interest income. Uh, as you know, the Federal Reserve has increased rates several times over the last several months. And of course, back when we put together the fiscal 22 uh, budget, uh, interest rates were very low, and that's what we forecasted. Uh, but with their increased rates over the last several months, we're picking up about $250,000 there in interest earnings uh, so far for this fiscal year. Not everything is rosy. Uh, as I've told you in the previous months, we do have a few items that are performing under budget, uh, the main one being our telecommunications tax, uh, which I've talked about. Uh, we were receiving last year about 220000 per month. Uh, this year that fell to about 190000 per month, and that's going to result in about a $350,000 shortage on that line item. Uh, also, our delinquent real estate. Uh, I think we've, we've done an outstanding job collecting those over the last five, six years, and so now it's just getting more and more difficult. Uh, we continue to have uh, auctions, as we usually do every six months. In fact, our next one is in this room on July the 15th at noon. Um, but it's getting harder and harder to collect those. Uh, what is remaining is delinquent real estate. Uh, we had budgeted uh, about 200000 more than we collected so far this year. So not a terrible shortfall, and certainly the, the positive items I mentioned at the beginning are more, far more than our, our negatives uh, at this point. So I really have no concerns over revenue collections. Uh, in general, they're ahead of what we budgeted uh, slightly. Also with expenditures uh, through the end of May, departments were at 85% of budget. Uh, we still have quite a few expenditures to book uh, for the last month, uh, you know, large ones being our payroll expenses. And of course, we'll be receiving invoices from vendors uh, for this fiscal year well through the end of July. So we'll just be adding more expenditures as we go to close out the year. Uh, so at this point, you know, I hesitate to make any bold statements about where we'll be. Uh, but I think as our budget was a, a, a zero budget, we did not have any draw from fund balance plan for this fiscal year. I think we'll easily find ourselves at that point, And hopefully there'll be a little bit of a surplus to add to fund balance by the end of this year. Uh, our fiscal year audit will be starting up with field work very soon, uh, and that usually uh, 
goes on through uh, the end of September all the way to about Thanksgiving. And so soon, uh, usually around the end of August, I'll be able to come to you with a very preliminary but, but pretty solid uh, results for the fiscal year, and I'll share those at that time. Councilman Buckley. Yeah, Michael, thank you for everything you do to continue to push Danville forward. Um, can you tell me uh, off the top of your head or, or close to, of that $1 million increase in business licenses, how many of those were from new businesses? Oh, I certainly don't have that information with me, but I think with working with Jimmy Gilley, we could probably come up with an idea of how many new business licenses were issued in the, in the dollar volume that were related to that. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you so much. Councilman Vogler. Um, Michael, I actually don't have anything for you. I, I appreciate the report. I just want, because there seemed to be some, some confusion, <coughs> I wanted to get clarification on the previous motion. Clark, the, the motion for the airplane tax failed, correct? I, Your microphone is on. He's saying that it requires six votes. It was five to four, and it, it failed because it didn't have six. The airport failed because it didn't have six votes. That's correct. All right, I thought so. I just Some people were confused, and I wanted to make sure it was clear to everybody that it, it didn't pass. Thank you. I'm sorry, Michael, but thank you. You're awesome, as always. Uh, well, he, he gave me. He said, you, Madison? So, so on the, um, Speak right into your microphone, yeah, thank please. You. Sorry, man. Um, on the... Um, Telecommunications tax, I think you told me, what is that, that were uh, telephones? That is tax on landline telephones, it is tax on uh, 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 cable vision satellite services. Uh, so I think well, I've mentioned, going up. well, I think I've mentioned in previous months, what I think is going on is, is more and more people are dropping their landlines and just using maybe where they had cellular service and landlines before. A lot of that's just becoming landline. Also, with cable vision services, I think a lot of people are depending more on streaming services through the internet rather than having a, a satellite or, or a cable vision as well. So we're, we're just seeing the effects of that. So I, I, the, the other question is, I was reading through um, part of the uh, budget, and when it got down to, I guess it was Clark's office, that 50% of them, are, of, of his, he and his staff are paid through the Utility Commission? Uh, no. Um, do you have any allocations in your department? R Ryan Ryan pays about fifty percent. Ryan's salary. Is no, no, no. This was. It said. I just said all your. It said uh, city attorney, and that right below it, it said that um, half the staff was paid by the utility department, and I just thought it was irregular. We have one employee, uh, and that's Ryan Dotson, who's an assistant city attorney, and fifty percent of his salary comes from the from from the utility department because 50 percent of his responsibility is the utility department thank you anyone else michael thank you so much have a good evening thank you so much on the considerations of changes to the city personnel system regulation council what's your pleasure Doc, vice mayor item b new business yes mr mayor uh, ordinance amending the personnel system of the city of Danville, providing for the classification compensation employee development for employment position of the city um, go ahead and read the other, the rest of that. Let's see. No, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Council, second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, if you would call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Hood. Mayor Jones. Aye. Mr. Mayor. Aye. Under item C, consideration of amended section four entitled Automobile Allowance of the City Managed Employment Contract, Dr. Miller. Yes, uh, I'd like to propose a resolution amending section four entitled Automobile Alliance of the City Managers Employment Agreement. Second by Councilman Buckner. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, if you would call the roll, please. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Hood. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Mr. Mayor. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Consideration of fee increases effective July 6, 2022. I open the public hearing. Anyone desire to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone desire to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Councilman Buckner. May I like to make a motion that we approve an ordinance amending and establishing certain rental fees of the City of Danville effective July 1, 2022 for the first reading. Second by Dr. Miller, first reading. Under item E, consideration of amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for a grant from the Danville Regional Foundation in the amount of $979,609. Councilman Vogler. 
Yes, Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance by increasing revenue from the Danville Regional Foundation in the amount of $979,690 and appropriating same first reading. Second by Councilman Buckner. Under item F, consideration of amending the fiscal year 2020 budget appropriation ordinance for a grant from the Danville Regional Foundation in the amount of $4 million. Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve an ordinance uh, amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance by increasing revenues from the Danville Regional Foundation in the amount of $4 million and appropriating the same first reading. Second by Councilman Campbell. First reading, consideration of amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for funds from the Virginia Tourism Corporation in the amount of $210,000. Councilman Campbell. Mr. Mayor, move for adopting the ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for two American Rescue Plan Act Tourist Recovery Program grants for Virginia Tourist Corporation in the amount of $100,000 and $110,000, respectively, for a total of $210,000 and appropriating the same. Second by Councilman Buckner, first reading. Communication, City Manager. I have nothing this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Deputy City Manager. <coughs> Thank you, sir. City Attorney. Yes, sir. I'd like to congratulate my friend Jack Garrett. Uh, when I think of Jack Garrett, uh, two words come to mind. Consummate professional. Outstanding. City Clerk. Nothing, sir. Call the roll, please. Mr. Vogler. <coughs> nothing this evening. Mr. Whittle. I'm here. Um, Every, every, I just had a really que a question. So when we do a first reading, we wouldn't discuss that to even see if it moved on through. I'm just, just a guess a question for Clark. His question was when there's the items that from E from D to G when it has a first reading, can you discuss it now or will you discuss it when it comes to the floor for discussion? You can do it anytime it's on the agenda. So if you wanted, if you want to discuss it during the first reading, and then you can discuss it again uh, when it's on for final adoption. I'm good. I'm good now. But I just didn't. Uh, I, I would have rather gotten through a few of these things uh, ahead of time, and then be able to go ahead and vote on the next one. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Buckner. Yeah, just real quick. Um, I was. I had the honor of speaking at the. Uh, Youth Police Academy at uh, Langston. And I'd like to give a shout out to Miss Sylvia Brooks and her team of folks that are over there doing amazing things with the youth. I bet there's 40 children over there um, on a daily basis and they're learning about the Danville Police Department and they're building relationships that will last a lifetime. Uh, these children were absolutely amazing. I had a, it, it was just such a fun time. If any of you guys get the opportunity to go over there and speak or, or just stop in and, and say hi, you'll, it'll really warm your heart because they're doing some great things. You all know how great Sylvia is. It's amazing to see that lady and, and her whole team in action. And you think wrestling up 40 kids all day long is not a tough job, but she's got her hands full, but they're doing an amazing job over there. Sylvia, congratulations. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come by and speak. That's all tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Reverend Campbell. Yes, thank you. I want to, to say um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for appointing me to Danville Public Schools. I want to thank also Dr. Miller and Councilman Sherman Saunders for the work and laboring that you have done for a number of years. I do have some concerns about Dammit Public Schools. And um, to me, in hearing some of the complaints and concerns about the schools, uh, it reminds me when first getting on city council when we saw so many problems with our downtown area. It was bleak, it was dark. We went around and talked to a lot of the merchants. My concern is, and I believe this from the bottom of my heart, Mr. Mayor, and to the citizens of Danville, first of all, I love this city. And I don't believe in my heart that we can run away from any problem. Uh, I know the integrity of council and what we believe in the hard work of the citizens of Danville. And I'm asking that we all put our hands together. Uh, you've heard this term before, it takes a village to raise a community. And we have some concerns. We have some major concerns. I'm thankful for the superintendent. I'm thankful for our school board. 
and, and for our community. And all I'm saying is let's put our hands together. Let's put our minds together. It's our young people. It's our youth. And I personally don't feel that when a child graduates from George Washington or Galileo, Langston, they have in the mind that they want to leave this area and go somewhere else. Danville is a great city. We are an all-American city. We have prosperity here, and we got major prosperity that's coming. And I just don't believe in my heart. I don't believe that, that we can look at any problem that we cannot solve and come up with a solution. These are our children. I'm thankful for all our teachers, thankful for the administration. We have many who have, are leaving, but we can make it work. We have a great city manager, deputy city manager, and I just believe in my heart that we can make a better Danville, Virginia. And lastly, before I shut up, I'm not gonna preach, <laughs> but I will take my text. <laughs> but what I'm saying here that I think that council and the school board, we need to have a powwow. I know that you know, we just need to come together and sometimes through controversy, we can come up with better solutions of moving forward. I thank you once again for allowing me to be in this position. And I say to you again, from the bottom of my heart, I don't believe that there is any problem in this city that we cannot deal with. This is a great city. We love this city and we can make it better. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Can I piggyback off that, please? please I mean, I, I, the, yeah, I was hoping that you would because if, let me just say this to you and Councilman Cam. I was going to say it to the end, and, and you're right. I just want to, again, I can't reiterate this enough. Your comments, Councilman Campbell, um, means much. And I'm so thankful, again, you're going to, and, and I know because as Councilman Sherman uh, Saunders stated, I was in the midst of all of that. And I, I do want you to say something because I want to thank you both for serving because Dr. Miller and Councilman Saunders did lay a roadmap for all of us. It's Councilman Whittle. It's, it's, this, is, this is the last goal that this council has set up since I've been here. And I'm, uh, I've never taken an appointment from any of the mayor since I've been here just because of my scheduling. And um, uh, I, I just think we can lean in and, and um, work hard on it and, and make it better. And these guys did a wonderful job. And um, we'll come back at it. Thank they you. Did a wonderful job. Dr. Miller. Piggyback off the piggyback. I've served with uh, Councilman Saunders for the last few years on this committee, and I have no doubt in my mind that he has the interest of the children in education at the top of his heart. Uh, he, uh, and he, it's just as he said, he, he had some concerns, but uh, he has worked hard, and uh, in his heart, he believes in Danville and believes in the education of our children. So um, and I just wish every success as we go forward to the uh, new appointees. We can bring it on home. Thank you. Well, you said you piggyback off the piggyback. He, when I asked you and Councilman Saunders to to ride what you just stated, he didn't hesitate to say yes. He said yes. I'll be more than happy to serve, and so did you. So, on behalf of Madison and Larry, I thank you all for recognizing because it it is a tough job, and I appreciate all four of you for what you have done and what you will be doing, Madam Clerk. Mr. Hood. Uh, yeah, I just want to. Um, just state that um, this past Friday, the Statehood Foundation put together an event, a collaborative event with uh, Danville Public Schools and church-based tutorial at the SCLC building in 97 degree weather inside and outside. Um, <laughs> but everybody came together. Uh, the actual event was named uh, Important Conversation with Our Youth. So we were able to get a lot of feedback through the community's youth and just different cities. Um, city students and, and parents were able to come together at multiple resource tables. Um, we appreciate our councilman and mayor being able to come out and, and share that time with us and get more engaged with our youth here in the city. Um, resource tables were provided and they um, also had an open sign up for summer and fall free um, tuition for the students. So I just wanted to acknowledge that event. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, just to piggyback off uh, Councilman Hood, uh, that was a great event that you had there. And I also want to mention that uh, along, along with the Youth Academy, I too uh, 
uh, had a basketball camp, and that keeps me young. For the 21st year, I've been running a basketball camp for inner city youth to give them the skills and the knowledge to become successful as they grow. Um, and I cannot um, miss that what we've heard through our schools and for um, Councilman Saunders and Councilman Miller, like Mayor said, you have pioneered us with um, working with our school systems and with having uh, Councilman Whittle and Councilman uh, Campbell on board. We got to continue to grow and, and push that avenue because to me, I believe failure is not an option within us as council members. And uh, I do want to, uh, in, with having the camp that I had and being able to work a lot with the kids and see how the fun they have, I want to encourage our parents, 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 I will say that often, please, whatever is going on with your child and children in our city, we do so much for them. Get on board. Get on board even when the upcoming school year be ready to get on board with the school so that we can turn around our uh, academic year uh, to be a success and to climb as we do that. So I, I um, always I tell the parents, um, get on board, find out what's going on, find out how we can help you and your children because without you, the children can't be successful. So I, I leave with that right there, but I also want to thank um, Dr. Miller and Councilman Saunders for doing what you do. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Miller. I want to give a special thanks to our utilities workers and the public works. Uh, last Thursday and Friday, we had two mean storms in this city. Uh, when I was coming over to the community market music on, at the market, uh, which is a great event, uh, there was horizontal lightning. I mean, lightning going across the sky. It wasn't even coming down. It was just everywhere. Uh, and there were a lot of damage. And then that storm Friday night, there was, I don't think there was a drop of rain where I was, but Trees were down, houses were bashed in, and our utilities people got out there, and, and you know there were 9,000 people, customers without power, and they got to work. And I don't know if they got a lot of help from other surrounding communities. Usually we have a reciprocation type thing, but they were tied up too, uh, the same storm. So just great job they did, and, and you know it's dangerous being out there in those storms and all these trees falling, but they just did an outstanding job. Uh, Saturday was the Children's Festival, dozens of vendors and and things for kids and uh, went out on Saturday morning, walked around. I think uh, Councilman Vogler was out there too later. The mayor and I were walking around and, you know, they have that high trapeze thing where the kids climb up and then they swing and all that and they back and forth. <laughs> the mayor and I were daring each other who would go first. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was saying, go ahead, Mary, you're the mayor, you go first. But this little six-year-old comes and she goes up to the top and does all these spins and flips and we just slunk, we just snuck away we didn't know but she was good <laughs> so anyway it was a great event and then uh last monday on the 13th we another little miller came into the world michael carrington miller was born in charlottesville seven pounds 11 ounces came out hungry came out screaming he there were about eight neonatologists in the room and a neonatologist is somebody who takes care of babies with a problem he didn't have a problem but my daughter-in-law is a neonatologist at the university of virginia and all these all of her trainees and other colleagues were there to make sure this baby came out good, and he did. So he had no problem. We're real proud of Michael Carrington Miller. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, like uh, uh, Vice Mayor, want to thank all of our employees, all of the public workers, for the amazing job they did during this last storm that we had. And we have acts of God, and we don't always know when he's going to act. But our people are ready. They stand ready. And they did an excellent job this last time. And not just an excellent job, but they also put them, themselves in harm's way, Mr. Mayor. And, and really want to thank them for making our city uh, you know, safe and getting our power back on. Congratulations also to Bishop Lawrence Campbell, who I've known since I was 15 years old. Uh, he retired um, Monday from 43 years as a director on First State Bank, now on board directors, and now um, the Movement Bank, 43 years. I think that's just amazing. So very, very uh, proud of him and wish him, I wish him well. Our city is growing, and we're going to need a lot of people because jobs are coming. 
jobs are coming. We know downtown is growing, but I tell you, jobs are coming to Danville. And they, these jobs pay very, very well. So I certainly hope, um, um, Mr. Whittle and uh, Mr. Campbell, that you know, our students will stay in school and take, enroll at Daniel Community College, someplace else whereby you can take uh, your, your, uh, cl uh, your classes in your schools while enrolled in DCC, for example, so when you graduate, you can get a job at 21 years old making forty and $50,000 a year. Those jobs are coming here. Believe me, they are. I know they are. You know, and, and I want to say there was a study done a few years ago, and it said that 70% of every high school graduate when they leave home, they never come back. Military, other jobs, other cities, they don't come back. Now I'm hearing the focus, while we still want people to get their bachelor's, master's, doctorate degrees, but associate degrees, two-year degrees, are very, very prominent now as well. So I say to our young people there and parents, there are so many opportunities out here, and I know, and I know our city manager and all of council members know that, more are coming and they're on the way, and we want to make sure that our people can get those kind of jobs. Also, I, I want to thank all the citizens for what you do every day, and I want to say a special thanks to all of our police officers and their families. Thank you all very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Jones. To the ministerial lines for hosting me and Councilman Mayo and Tommy a couple of weeks ago. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you all. It's one thing to be invited somewhere, and I say it all the time, but to be welcome. You all welcome us, and I want to thank you all. Stand up, please. Let's give them a big hand, please. Thank you all so much. Mike just went off, but also to Amanda Payas. Amanda, stand up. We were. Um, hosting, there was a lot, I called the city manager, he was on vacation, Amanda, I called the city manager, and I said, I know you know what's going on in the city. On that Monday, I was out at the institute because there were young people at the institute, and then Amanda said, you're supposed to be at City Hall. I was on my way to City Hall. There was a group of young people here. She and I, Mark, Aaron, and others hosted these young people. Then I went over to Langston that same day. We had, as Councilman Buckner said, we had a police youth camp. Then Councilman Hood had his event on Friday. The whole point of it, then we had the Children's Festival bill with this past weekend. It was a lot going on, and there's a lot going on in the city of Danville with our youth. And I want to thank all of you for everything that y'all build. Thank you all so much, everyone. Lastly, our council has three strategies, and our three strategies was reduce violent crimes, support education, and grow Danville. Council, I want to thank you because it was me, your mayor, who asked council and the city staff if we can move education to our number one priority. The reason that we wanted to move our acts to move education to our number one priority is because our chief of police and the whole team did an outstanding job. Our crime rate was the lowest that it was in 30 years. And so the next thing was, can we move this education piece up? Every council member that's sitting here, city staff, they said we want to support we want to take this and do it wherever we can. When we talked about supporting education, it's just not Danville Public Schools. As you heard, we got DCC, we got Avery University, anything that deals with education. Councilman Saunders, and one of the things that I ask because I try to stay behind it is ask Councilman Saunders and Councilman um, Miller, along with the city manager, will they be able to stand instead and come back to council, just like we do with the riffle board. We have a riffle board persons, we have different things. And they did it. Councilman Saunders, I wanna thank you and Councilman Miller because I think you've been very nice tonight. And I'm, no, I'm sure there are some persons who oftentimes what you may not understand that you hear council person say to council members, you threw us under the bus. No, we're trying to get kids on the bus. You've heard it a few minutes ago, you're gonna to continue to hear it. All it was so hard for me as your mayor 
when I know what two of the persons that I selected, when I know what they went through, and yet I had to still sit here and saying education, education, education. It was hard each and every time. It was very hard. It was hard when I heard from, along with every council person that's sitting here, when we heard this entire year from educational staff persons about their struggles. And we couldn't say anything, but we just tried to encourage them. It was very hard. One of the toughest years that we've had in education, Councilman Riddle, I want to thank you for encouraging me in the parking lot of Crema and Vine. And this is what you said to me. You said we were able to tackle reducing violent crime. We were able to tackle growing Danville. And then you said we're able to tackle education. And that's why I chose you. To the citizens in this city, do not think that you're a council, and I have to say this. Many are not going to like it, but I have to say it. To the citizens in this community, please, please, please know that this council's focus is education. I have to say it. And our city manager, deputy city manager, and city staff have been working tirelessly, tirelessly trying to help us to help those who, our kids, our teachers, our staff, we hear from it, and the school system have been through so much. Councilman Campbell, you were chosen because this is what you said to me. You said, Mr. Mayor, I'm tired of getting calls from persons who are tired of being talked down to in the school system. Your work is cut out for you, but you have some support. You've heard me say it, and I say it again. I told this to Councilman Campbell. I told it to Councilman Whittle. I told it to Dr. Miller. I told it to Councilman Saunders. We have a great superintendent, and I'm going to close with that. This meeting is adjourned. <clears throat> Make a plane.